Stanley Prannon here again. I'd like to offer a few comments in conclusion about the zone theory of Aikido. You know, I never thought I would find myself in the position of wanting to offer some kind of a technical material on Aikido. I thought of myself more as a writer and researcher all these years, and that consumed most of my active energy. And I just uh, pursued my training on my own with a small group of uh, students here out of my home. But let me offer a few comments as to why I decided to put out my ideas in the form of a technical course. I have opportunities to get exposed to many viewpoints and uh, methods of practice of Aikido, uh, both uh, through my online activities and also uh, through some occasional traveling in, into different parts of uh, the Aikido world. I've seen uh, many different styles of Aikido. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I saw that uh, it's very common for practitioners to resort to physical strength, which I think is a dead-end street. But also, all in all, I, I found that Aikido as a general trend has tended to go away, deviate from the course of uh, the founder the founder's ideas in terms of uh, the philosophy of the art and also uh, in a technical sense. You know, you'll read about O Sensei in his final years and you see that his explanations were almost non-existent. He would just demonstrate a technique very quickly, several times, and then have the students practice. So only those with sharp eyes and uh, great dedication were able to pick up some of these invisible things, uh, these secrets, if you will, of what O Sensei was doing in his training. So in my work I have an opportunity to travel quite a lot and also, of course, through my online activities I get exposed to many different viewpoints on Aikido, both from a technical and a theoretical standpoint. I watch videos all the time, I do a lot of editing. In fact, my editing of videos has proven one of the most interesting uh, ways of understanding some of the weaknesses of Aikido technique. As those of you know, if you've ever edited a video, you have control over frame by frame. You can step through a technique, for example, that takes a second and a half and go through 50 or 60 images and you can stop at any point you want. Well, sometimes I'm dealing with some of the top teachers in the world or uh, advanced students with many years of training, and I'll go through the uh, a throw and I'll see if uh, the teacher or the person throwing has uh, been able to successfully unbalance his partner. I'll see uh, also instances of whether someone has unbalanced their uke, but uke has been brought to another position where his balance has been returned to him. So from a martial arts standpoint, uh, it's not very persuasive to me. I think that uh, techniques should be done uh, very uh, quickly. Uke's balance should always be taken and there should be economy in the, of movement where you uh, have as little interaction as possible or necessary to accomplish the goal which is bringing your partner under control and arresting the uh, violent uh, attitude if it were a real situation. You know, I've, I've missed O Sensei by two months. I arrived in Japan for the first time two months to the day after he passed away. In fact, I arrived the day that his wife died, exact day. But uh, because of the nature of my work and the length of time I've uh, spent on this research, I feel in some very fundamental sense that O Sensei was one of my very important, if not the most important teacher. Uh, we, we think of him, as I mentioned before, as just showing techniques very quickly, but in his own element, in his own dojo in Iwama after the war, he would teach 
uh, with, ver with great precision. Because otherwise, someone like Saito Sensei, who is just a, a country lad, could never have mastered this vast curriculum. Where did all these techniques come from if it, was not, if it were not from uh, O Sensei himself? So I'm very convinced because of what I've uh, learned historically and because of the testimonies of people close to uh, O Sensei that this period immediately after the war is really what gave birth uh, to Take Musu Aiki, which is uh, Aikido techniques done in a spontaneous uh, way with an unlimited un amount of techniques expressing themselves naturally according to the circumstances. I also, in seeing many of these uh, demonstrations of Aikido and attending seminars, watching uh, you know, people perform the art, uh, there are many great teachers out there. there. There are many great students, there really are. Uh, but there are a lot of people who are well known who uh, approach Aikido in a way that I don't really consider martial. I, I don't see what uh, the Japanese would call ikioi, which is like vigor or spirit or energy in their techniques. And this is not to say that they uh, c cannot execute effective technique, but it's not displayed that way usually. And uh, therefore people who are not familiar with Aikido, who are not practicing uh, the art, don't take the art seriously as, as a martial art per se or, or an effective self-defense art. So uh, in my personal view, I, I'd rather portray Aikido as a martial art, not just if you happen to find yourself in a, in a situation where you need to use it, but also so that you have a sharpness or alertness in your daily life. So I think Aikido has great value in that sense. Practitioners today, uh, of course there are some people who refer to Aikido as a martial art, and rightly so. Uh, some of them uh, practice and demonstrate the art with great vigor, which I applaud. Others may refer to Aikido as a martial art, but when you look at what they're doing, you don't get the impression that it, it's very martial or that it would uh, be effective in any sense against a determined attacker. And then there are other people who just, they really enjoy Aikido, they enjoy going down to the dojo, exercising their bodies, building up uh, sweat, they enjoy the camaraderie of the dojo, the uh, social environment, and they don't really care one way or the other if Aikido is effective as a, a technique, potentially, because that's not why they're there. They're there to have a good time, they're there to, there to get some exercise, and to make and interact with their friends. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, I enjoy the exercise, I enjoy the camaraderie of the dojo too, but I also regard it as martial, and I try to put a lot of focus and a lot of intention in my uh, practice of the art. And this is a personal preference. Uh, people will approach the art in many different ways. So uh, finally, I'd like to thank all of you who have watched these videos, and I hope you find something of value in them. And I'm going to continue doing some more. I keep getting more and more ideas, and I want to develop uh, various uh, ways of teaching some of these things that I'm talking about, relaxation, body unification, that's kind of the next phase I see this going in. So again, thank you very much for joining me and uh, I hope that uh, you'll uh, go through the videos if you haven't and if, for those of you who want the complete course, please feel free to uh, check out the link below. Thanks so much.